outside, I'm with Mercedes, and work's happening in, I'm not doing it, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Lurking under the bonnet right now is Andy from the Fake Russian YouTube channel who after my last video said I can't bear to see this thing not starting any longer. I'm going to come with some spanners and we're going to have a go at making this thing start. So right now he's taking the fuel distributor off again because we've had a quick look at where the fuel's going and we think we might have a clue as to why this car's not starting which means maybe later on today we can move up and down the drive very slowly with no brakes. Yay! You might know the Fake Russian's channel for this Mondeo which is uh, what he generally does a lot of work on. Oh. Right, I found out what your problem is. As Go on. soon as I push this down, that squirts. Ah, so it's not moving. Or it's, it's not. It's not moving. Aha, uh -huh, okay. Right. So the socket just fell down underneath here, and we can't see it, so I'm just wandering around with a magnet, trying to see if I can locate it. I can't. That might be awkward later. <laughs> On. Tools tend to do that. Yeah. They drop into the engine and sort of like that. It never to be seen again. Right. So I don't think that your problem is the fuel distributor. I think what it is is that it's that lever. Well, that's been rebuilt. I've stripped it down twice and rebuilt it now, and I'm sure it's all fine inside. Right. Okay. Come on. Off we come. A little bit of a wiggle to get it out. Yeah, there we go. Right, so as this moves up and down, what will happen is, is that that cam will roll. Oh, I see, yeah. Slightly. So it's, if you like, self cleaning. Mm, just wiping itself off like, yeah. a, like a cam shot. I don't know whether there's anything. No, it's just a <laughs> lot of <laughs> that's on it. It's, like a it's to reduce friction. So now, if there's any dirt on this, of course, it's going to stick. Hmm. Some carb cleaner or some brake cleaner on it. Right. I think that's fitting. Aha. Uh -huh. It feels like it's turning. Is that going up or down? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're doing right now, or so what Andy's doing right now, is he's adjusting the level of that disc, which is like the adjustment the fuel adjustment meter basically and it has to sit perfectly to get a right vacuum and have we just cleaned out that area in there which may have been gunking up and so it wasn't turning and pushing the the pump in the fuel distributor okay well we're gonna evolve here oh you're counting your turns no <laughs> well i've got no frame of reference no it's true so what we do is that we screw it all the <clears> way down Oh, and work then we start there. bringing it back. That's more ready now mm. to... So you buy, bounce it. But I've got to do it. That, is, for some reason, that is missing. It might be broken inside there. Yeah, unfortunately, I think that we're going to have to take ah. that off. So that is messy, isn't it? It is. That could do with a really good clean up. Um, so where's the uh, hole we were looking at, the screw? That in the middle, isn't it? Right, it's right in the center. In the middle there. Yeah. So, uh, paracyclic pliers, and then this pin will just knock out. Okay. And then we can take all this to pieces. We can see what's going on with that screw in there. Yep, that screw's not touching, is it? That screw's, that I'm adjustment not screw's not actually reaching it. What just dropped out? Oh. Ball bearing? Yeah, little ball bearing. So they actually work on the little ball bearings. Mm. Thank you, sir. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That's jumped. Yeah. Um, this is... Oh, God. <laughs> right, okay. Now, we've got a pair of more grips. Yep. Right, there we go. 
Well, there's that. That is very dry. You see, that's the thing, because, right, this little pin here mm. is supposed to sit in that little recess there. And it's not even coming out, is it? So that's... No. That little pin that we were talking about sits in there. Yeah. And that right. is that is a fairly... It's quite a deep yeah, recess. Yeah. And the thing is, yeah, I don't think that adjuster we're adjusting reaches far enough to reach that. Yeah. And whether even if it's work if it's working we'd be winding it right down to the far end of its, its yeah. travel. So I think that the only thing that we can do really is put this all back together. Mm. Um I mean it's not like while it's out clean it up a little bit. Yeah, just on the off chance this doesn't make yeah. a difference. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well you never know. Yeah. You never know. Sometimes just cleaning something can... Uh... Yeah. I think it went the other way, wasn't it? Because it was, yeah, it was quite close to the top. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that then, that touches the bottom of the uh, yeah. distributor plunger. But we need a yeah. lot more trouble because to, for it to even start to touch the, the plate, it's going to be mostly almost all the way out anyway, isn't well, it? Well, yeah. yeah I mean, it's it's be... like I would have thought it'd be out like that. Oh, yeah, to even begin because to touch it. Inside the other piece is like a little recess mm. that just sits above there. Yeah. So that's at nine mil right. at the moment. So if I get this and I twizzle this back, mm. it should be a different number of millimeters. If it isn't, then it's broken and we need a new cover. Yeah. No, it's still at eight mil. Mm. So it looks like a thread knackered then. So it looks like it's winding back, but it doesn't look like it's winding forwards. Mm. Uh, we've got bit, little bits of metal shavings that are coming out on the Allen key. Ah, so it suggests maybe that's broken apart in there. It suggests to me that's not like somebody's been pissing around with it and they've over tightened it or something. Oh, I stripped the thread. Yeah. We're just examining this thing, trying to work out yeah. things. And, and you can see the crack going down there. It's going underneath that thing and it's coming out. At this side of the thing, so and I wonder if, if that we means turn it over. Oh, you can see the yeah. cracks all the way through. So I wonder if this is not airtight anymore. You can see this has been off, and someone has been properly abusing this part. So this is probably why the car was parked up. Someone's trying yeah, to make it we've work. We've also got little marks here as well. Oh yeah, and couple that with the worn-out thread on the adjuster and the possible little cracks on the top. I think we found out why the car isn't starting. Yeah. This this unit here has been badgered, been stripped it apart again because we realised we'd left a little part out. <laughs> now be honest, it was me that left okay, the part out. I'm being kind here. Of, after Andy <laughs> left the part out, <laughs> we're now putting it back together again, and we think we might have not put it back together right in the first place anyway. But we're more confident now. Although. We still think the actual overall housing and everything is knackered anyway, so it's all just, I don't know really, just to see, just to put off the inevitable of going on eBay to try and buy a new one. Well, that's the problem we've got now. This plate is meant to sit flush with this bevel just here, where it sort of stops, it, it comes into like a point on the top and the bottom, and it's meant to sit flush here, and before it kind of did. And now when we reassemble it, sits slight I can't tell you this, it sits slightly <laughs> below it. But take 37 of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if we undo this screw and take out the rubber washer there on this basically this a metal bar is effectively a return spring where a pin on the bottom of that touches, then it's fine. The moment we tighten the screw up, then it screws everything up and it stops going up as far as it should do, just by tightening the screw. You would think by tightening the screw, it will push the return spring further away and actually bring this closer to the top, but it doesn't. It makes it go further away from where it should be. There is a witness mark from however many years it's been in the car. Well, having said that, we now know that someone has taken this apart in the past and just horribly mullered it. And we don't know if they put it back correctly and we're copying an incorrect reassembly. So with that loose and slackened off, that actually works. So how tight is that? Is that dangerously loose or is that... Yeah, it's dangerously loose, isn't it? Mm. So if we just get a little nip up, right. if that's just nipped up to the point where it's... Well, so that makes no sense because it, it was just closing. And now it's not again. Apparently this is a precision item. Apparently. <laughs> You've got that little bit more airflow there. Maybe it'll go. 
Hey, <coughs> if we can get this thing sort of like ticking over, even if it's like a bag of <laughs> Oh, if it's running, any, any running is better than no running. So, so now Andy is reattaching all the pipes. So this is the bit I've done a million times and can do in my sleep. So why he's doing it instead of me, I don't know really. I think because I'm talking to the camera. But <laughs> hopefully this might make the car splutter into life. There's a fairly good chance it won't because we're 90% certain that that um, metering unit is actually knackered and it's going to need to either be, well, restored, repaired, replaced, something along those lines. But, you know, having cleaned it up inside, adjusted it a bit, it might, it just might, be the thing it needed to make this car come to life. No, right. it won't. I want to see what fuel yeah. Comes out of these. Okay. Okay, okay, ready? Three, two, one. Oh. Anything coming out? Yeah, we got fuel coming out. <laughs> we got a lot coming out of here. Mm -hmm. We got a, a little bit coming out of here and out of here, and we got a fair bit. So these two seems to be okay we got fuel coming out of here as well which oh, is that the cold start there is one that goes to the cold start ah test number two having reconnected more pipes to see what goes where ready three two one right we've got a ton of air in the system but mm -hmm. look at that oh wow look at that that was beautiful hissing like i don't know what like a so we've actually improved it yeah slightly okay that's good right now we just need to start reconnecting the injector something i didn't say to andy before he started working was don't disconnect all of the fuel injection lines from the engine <laughs> you can just start slacking them off and move them back but before <laughs> i realized that he'd taken all four off <laughs> luckily we've got an old photo to refer to to work out which goes where <laughs> right let's see what she does how many hours is this now? Four o'clock now, so we've got about 11. Uh, about so, half 11, yeah. Yeah, so, so four, and a half, four, four or five hours. Four and a half hours. Yeah, of effort. Is this gonna be enough to make this car start? Three, two, one, no fire in the hole. <laughs> oh. Easy start. I'll give it a go, go on then. So uh, that was a no then. We've popped an injector out. I'm just gonna see if any spray comes out of it when I crank the engine. Yeah. Three, two, one. Nope. Nothing? Nothing, not a thing. That's ridiculous. That makes no sense because it's pressurizing. Yeah. yeah. It makes no sense, it's pressurizing. You can tell that by the way that it's working out of that. It's de this is delivering fuel. Mm. But well, they're new injectors, so it could be, doesn't mean they're not faulty. To be fair, I mean, it's rare if you get faulty injectors. What are you done with the 12? It was up there. <laughs> are you sure? Yeah, look at the injectors. It looks like one of the injectors, well, the front injector. Whoops. Well, um... <laughs> More stuff lost in the engine bay. Yeah. It looks well, a bit... Can you see? Yeah, it does look a bit gunky, doesn't it? It does. What you probably couldn't hear over the compressor a minute ago was we now think maybe the fuel injector delivery lines are at fault. Clogged up with old dirt. Anything coming through? No. So that these. Oh, is it working? That now? just cleared it. <laughs> so Andy's got a face full of petrol and gunk. <laughs> yeah. That's me you right now. That pipe, I mean, sort of like when I first blew through it, mm. it felt like it was blocked because it would took a real D puff. Give another blow again. But now, hang on. Oh yeah, that's clear now. Yeah. But it was gunked before. Yeah. So basically, new injectors in and they're trashed, or they're gunked up. Oh, hang on. Yeah, that's working now. I'll clear. It. Yeah, that's working now. Handful of petrol to, for, my, for my trouble. Right, so it was delivering. Yeah, it was just 
But there was no spray coming out. It was of it. gunked up at the top. But yeah. if, we, if we put this back in, that might fire on one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like it. <laughs> so, it might fire on one. I mean, what sort of a man says <laughs> The desperate one. This car. This car clearly wants to be taken to pieces and sold bit by bit and then the car is taken away by the scrap man which I know would make my wife very happy indeed but it's telling me I want to die it's telling me don't buy a 500 pound fuel metering unit for me I'm not worth it sell me and go and buy a 4 crown Victoria it's saying <laughs> well it's now about five hours since we started. It's dark, it's cold, we've drunk a lot of tea, eaten some biscuits, and oh, got the cheese sandwich. And the cheese sandwich. And become quite fed up with this car. Both been beaten, me, an idiot from YouTube, Andy, a retired mechanic with 30 years experience, are still scratching our heads while this car refuses to start. Definitely getting fuel through the metering unit, through the distribution unit. It's bubbling out at the point where the plugs or the, or the, uh, the pipes connect into the top of the distribution unit. But it's struggling to get any fuel from there down to the injectors. And we can't figure out why there's, there's no pressure there. It just can't seem to do it. It still fires up with a bit of Easy Start. So, bizarrely, with that little squirt of Easy Start, that fuel is going through the entire system and through the injectors. But not when it's petrol. And the petrol's got good pressure as well. It makes no sense. It's kind of like the car saying it doesn't want to live. It's had enough, it wants to die. If anyone would like to buy a Mercedes W123, it'll be on fire in a field over there. <laughs> Bring a trailer. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. Really appreciate your time today. Absolutely no problem whatsoever. I'm, I just, I'm just gutted <coughs> that I can't get the bloody thing going, but it, it's like you said, there's fuel going to, going to the distributor. There's, there's pressure building up inside of the distributor. It's coming out those the holes, um, but it's not delivering to the injectors, and I don't know why. So it's tomorrow again. I don't want to put too negative a spin on this weekend's activities trying to make this car work. And while I'm talking, I'm going to list some names down below. And these people are the Patreons, or patrons, I guess you would call them, who have helped keep this channel going because trying to fix this free car is turning into something very expensive. They're also helping to support the Rover. You may have noticed that the Tomcat isn't here at the moment. That's the way getting an MOT, so a video coming on that soon, also featuring the Alpha. Um, so thank you very much indeed. Your name will be flowing below here short at the moment i really appreciate you guys you make this thing possible to do as a as a channel meanwhile here's what's going to happen next with this car and what we've since learned after we put all the tools away andy later on spoke to someone who knows a bit more about these mechanical fuel injections and a he thinks that the way it was priming and bubbling but then not putting any force through the injectors means that the only part of the injection system that I haven't changed is the one bit that's at fault still and that is known in some cases as the accumulator and in some cases as the regulator and it's known to me as the ridiculously expensive little canister that sits between the fuel pump and the fuel filter and it was the one part of that whole little equation down there behind the axle that I didn't change because it's about £175 and I thought well, from what I'd read about it, it wasn't massively important because it just kind of controls and regulates the fuel flow through the system. But it looks like, in fact, it does control things quite a lot more precisely than that. So I need to pop it off and see if I can clean it with some braking carb cleaner and maybe some pressurized air. I don't know. Well, it's broken anyway, so I can't make it any worse. My plan of action now, there's nothing been many hours of not editing this video and just working and working with no actual success. What I need to do now is pop off all the injectors and all the fuel delivery lines, put some cleaning solution through there, blast them clean, make sure they're all nice and clean. And then I need to pop off that regulator slash accumulator and see if I can do anything about tidying that up. But I suspect I can't and I suspect my credit card's in for another walloping. So thanks for watching and thanks to Andy. And uh, yeah, I'll see you again very soon.